had something go right over the top of us. We are getting new video from the Navy showing pyramid-shaped objects. Stuff. The last card is the alien card, and all of it is a lie. Frankly, there are a lot more sightings than have been made public. Um, movements that uh, that are hard to replicate, that we don't have the technology for. We don't have it. They don't have it. The question is, who has it? Who's operating these vehicles? The information is very compelling. It's it's real. Yeah. Okay, it's real. Are they from another planet? If it's not ours and it's not theirs, well, then it's it's someone or something else. I can't wait for this report to come out. There is no longer any doubt unidentified flying objects are real. This one was seen by now retired Navy pilot Alex Dietrich in her F-18 off the coast of California. UFO sightings in New York have nearly doubled since the pandemic began and we are getting new video from the Navy showing pyramid shaped objects flying in the sky. These cell phone photos taken by a FA-18 pilot in March of 2019 show three different unidentified aircrafts off the coast of Oceana. A Department of Defense spokesperson said, quote, I can confirm that the referenced photos and videos were taken by Navy personnel. The Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force has included these incidents in their ongoing examinations. A U.S. intelligence report on UFOs is expected to be released very soon. The long-awaited Pentagon report on UFOs has finally been released. Friday, the U.S. government released a much-anticipated report on everything it knows about UFOs. Now, the study released on Friday found only one of those can be explained, just one. If you're watching this, you're probably a lot like I was. As far back as I can remember, I've always been intrigued with the paranormal, aliens and ghosts and UFOs. And I can remember being in a public school and elementary school, checking out books on ghosts and aliens. And these were books in the non-fiction section. These were photographs with anomalies that looked like ghosts and aliens and UFOs. And I always wanted to know the answer, what's out there? Sadly, the church didn't provide me with the answers I was looking for, and I went down the road of the occult. To me, Christians were very narrow-minded, and if something didn't make sense to them, well, it must be evil or of the devil. And so I wanted to find out for myself what this was all about. Now that I have come into the truth about this topic, I don't want others to have to go down the road that I did. As Bible-believing Christians, I believe that we do have the answers, and I stand on 1 Peter 3.15, which says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. I believe we should always be ready to give an answer, even to tough questions like these. When the disciples asked Jesus what would the signs be like of the last days, he always talked about deception. Let no man deceive you by any means. And in Revelation 12, 9 it says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. What kind of deception would it take to deceive the entire world? We're talking about different nationalities of people with different cultures, different religious ideas, and different world views. How on earth could there be one giant deception that would deceive everyone on the earth? Revelation 13, 13 and 14 says, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwelleth on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So now we know that the deception is going to be through miracles. Matthew 24, 24 says, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Here again, we see these signs and miracles that are being presented by false Christs and false prophets. The purpose of this documentary is to do what Ephesians 5.11 says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. The media is no longer calling these sightings swamp gas and weather balloons. And it isn't tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists that are saying UFOs are among us. Now it is the military. Speaking to fighter pilots who reported seeing unidentified flying objects. Every day. 
every day for at least a couple years. This was extremely abrupt, like a ping pong ball bouncing off a wall. The ability to hover over the water and then start a vertical climb from basically zero up towards about 12,000 feet and then accelerate in less than two seconds and disappear is something I had never seen in my life. In my position as the ranking member of terrorism and counterintelligence, we need to know what this is. It's clear to see that pop culture is obsessed with outer space and aliens and UFOs. You can hardly watch a kid's show or a movie or a comic book or an advertisement that doesn't show a UFO or an alien. And it's not just in worldly entertainment, it's also in Christian media. And I'm Bubbles from the Elevation Church Kids podcast, Adventures of the Starkeepers. Around March of 2009, History Channel had a new show called Ancient Aliens. This took the idea of believing in aliens from your wacky fringe theorist to the scientific and historical world. The show propagates the ancient astronaut theory, which is the idea that ancient civilized cultures were actually higher advanced technologically than we had ever thought. They show ancient sculptures that depict men wearing suits that look like astronaut suits. They show ancient artworks and etchings and sculptures that resemble alien greys and flying saucers. After some years going down the road of the occult, I eventually came back to Christianity and as a new believer in Christ, I began to watch this show looking for answers. And I remember distinctly how they portrayed the Exodus story of Moses and the Israelites following the beam of a UFO through the wilderness. Even the pillar of cloud could have been exhaust fumes from a UFO. This was a very intriguing idea to me because I believed in extraterrestrials and that God created all things. And if God sent angels on missions to help men, why wouldn't he send his other creatures on other planets to help men? As I continued my lifelong search for truth on this matter, I found out that militaries of the world, including the US military and the Nazis, have created flying saucer crafts. So this made me wonder why our minds always went directly to outer space when we would see these things flying in the sky. How come our minds weren't thinking of secret military craft, but instead thinking of aliens flying saucers? The answer is pretty clear. Since the dawn of sci-fi novels and radio and television, this idea of alien men flying around in saucers has been implanted into our mind for generation upon generation. Then I seen a United Nations speech from September 21, 1987 by Ronald Reagan that made me question, is there a reason for all this propaganda? Could there possibly be an agenda to why the leaders of the world would want us to believe this idea that alien creatures are flying around in our atmosphere? These are the words that Ronald Reagan spake at that United Nations meeting. In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? Ironically, 32 years later, on December 20th, 2019, President Trump unveiled the newest branch of the military. Because space is the world's newest warfighting domain. The United States Space Force. So now the military is protecting the land, the sea, the air, and space. But it wasn't until the COVID pandemic hit in 2020 that things began to get a little strange. Suddenly, every mainstream media news source was talking about the government releasing everything they knew about UFOs and how that was actually part of a newly passed COVID-19 relief legislation. And the Corona Relief Bill the president signed last month to disclose what they know about UFOs within 180 days. U.S. intelligence agencies have less than six months to disclose what they know about UFOs. It's all part of the Corona coronavirus relief deal President Trump signed back in December. When he signed the massive $2 trillion COVID relief and government funding bill last month, he triggered a countdown for U.S. intelligence agencies to tell Congress what they know about UFOs. So far, any military that's been on the news has said that these crafts are not ours and they're not theirs, so they must be someone else's. We don't have it. They don't have it. Who's operating these vehicles? If it's not ours and it's not theirs, well, then it's, it's someone or something else. So the question is, are they from another world or another dimension? The History Channel is propagating that these beings are from another world. Could mainstream scientists be discovering the home worlds of extraterrestrial visitors? For ancient astronaut theorists, the answer is a resounding yes. 
The big revelation will not be, do they look like us, but we look like them, because we are their offspring. But let's look at some of the spiritual aspects of this phenomenon. In 1917, on the 13th day of the month from May to October, three shepherd children said that they saw an apparition of the Virgin Mary. But some Catholic theologians believe was the Virgin Mary. On October 13, 1917, a crowd of 70,000 gathered to see this apparition. 70,000 people came to this same sheep pasture. As the crowds raised their eyes to heaven in prayer, they would witness the promised miracle confirming everything that the children had said. They saw the sun dance. This spiritual apparition appeared as a glowing disc flying around in the heavens, much like many of the UFO sightings. And people said that they saw a spinning silver disc the kids were given three messages. The third message apparently talks about extraterrestrial life. Many people involved in the New Age beliefs and practices have experiences with star people or star seeds, also known as indigo children. They call them indigo children and say that some of these kids can even see the spirits of the dead. It's the belief that certain people originated as extraterrestrials and arrived on Earth through birth or as a walk-in to an existing human body. Star seeds are people or souls, more likely, that find it very difficult to be here on Earth because apparently Earth is not really their home. Star seeds are highly evolved souls whose soul origin is from the stars. Star seeds are souls who originated in the Pleiades. Star seeds are beings who have spent maturity of their lives on different planets. The first sign that you are a star seed is that you've always felt like an alien. It is a variant of the belief in alien human hybrids. The question is if these star people are visitors from another planet, how can these physical beings enter into the body of another person? This actually sounds more like the accounts we hear in the Bible of unclean spirits entering into human beings. Luke 11:24 says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. We see that it is actually an unclean spirit that can enter into the physical body of a human being, whereas physical beings from another planet seems a lot less unlikely to be able to enter into the body of a human. Roger Morneau, later in his life in the early 90s, shared his testimony of how he was involved in a secret society of demon worshippers, and he said that a satanic high priest told him that the Grand Master, or Satan, had a deception plan for humanity, that demonic spirits would pose as visitors from far distant galaxies. He also said that it would be during a time of great calamity on the earth, and when New Age beliefs were running rampant. Roger, when I was a teenager back in the 1970s, I remember a song that came out talking about the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've seen the development of the New Age, and I wondered if back when you were involved in spirit worship, if they talked about New Age at all. Oh yes, it was a big thing that uh, was coming up. One of the uh, major deceptions of the last days. And the priest uh, told us, uh, we had, we talked uh, quite a while, and uh, then he said, uh, could I have a bit more? You were talking about something very fascinating. He says, the grain plain, the master's grain plain, for harvesting the nations, uh, for, for, for harvesting the multitudes of the earth into his cause, just before the close of the great controversy between the forces of good and evil. So he continued, you know, after we uh, express ourselves, that we're deeply interested to know more about the activities of spirits. And he said, it's going to be done in a unique manner. This, this grand plan is, is, is going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff. Because it says spirits, demon spirits, will declare themselves to be inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. And he went on saying that uh, uh, they will claim uh, to have out-of-body experiences. Are you familiar with out-of-body experiences? Mm -hmm. I've read about. In them. other words, so a person's uh, there's some persons are supposed to be able to, you know, uh, they believe in their immortal soul. Astral immortal soul projection. Pro yes, right. Goes into different parts of the world and sees things and come back and then they write all about it. You know. I've heard of that. So 
<laughs> due to the fact that the millions of the earth people believe in having people having an immortal soul, it has to be readily, readily accepted when the spirits will, through a trans medium, converse with influential people of the line, you see. Now, what is a trans medium? It's a channeler today. What, what is known today as a channeler? A channeler, yeah. Okay. Uh, Shirley MacLaine's experience of getting involved with spiritism and with the uh, inhabitants, of course, inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies. I taped the whole thing, three hours. Was, and you were hearing the fulfillment of exactly. what this high priest had said yeah. 45 years ago. Yeah, exactly. Part of New Age practices involves being a channeler or a medium for spirits, as well as extraterrestrials. There are thousands of these sessions recorded where a person willfully allows their body to be inhabited by an alien being and to speak through them to give a message to humanity. This practice is becoming more and more popular among young people today as influencers of the world are promoting this idea. Bunch of spaceships. There were like five to seven, and I don't know why I didn't like try to take a picture of it, I just looked at it. Kesha says that it was her interview with Demi Lovato that intrigued her into channeling alien beings. Um, with Demi Lovato, I loved the conversation we had because she just turned me on to like a whole new, there are a couple books she mentioned and an app she mentioned that I immediately downloaded and I made my family for Christmas. I was like, all I want for Christmas is us all to meditate and try to channel extraterrestrials. And they're like, okay. So I'm like trying to get all my friends and family into meditating the aliens to us. So <laughs> my new hobby because of Demi Lovato. Something in that. Thank you, Demi, for that. Demi Lovato was featured in Christian Broadcast Network News as saying that being baptized in Israel filled the God-sized hole in my heart. In October of 2019, she posted a photograph of herself on Instagram being baptized in Israel with this post. I am an American singer. I was raised Christian and have Jewish ancestors. When I was offered an amazing opportunity to visit the places I had read about in the Bible growing up, I said yes. There is something absolutely magical about Israel. I've never felt such a sense of spirituality or connection to God, something I've been missing for a few years now. Spirituality is so important to me. To be baptized in the Jordan River, the same place that Jesus was baptized, I've never felt more renewed in my life. This trip has been so important for my well-being, my heart, and my soul. I'm grateful for the memories made and the opportunity to be able to fill the God-sized hole in my heart. Thank you for having me, Israel. Here, Demi Lovato shares on the Dr. Phil show of how she was prophesized over when she was a small child about how she would use her musical gifts to reach thousands. I went to church camp one time and there was somebody who spoke in tongues over me and I grew up Christian, so I wasn't familiar with this experience. And I remember them prophesizing over me, saying that one day you'll be a hero to tens of thousands of people. And luckily my platform has reached many more through social media and through my work, but um, it was that day that she said, you'll be a hero to thousands of people. And she said it would be through the arts. And I knew in that moment that if I ever were to make it as a singer, I kind of made this pact with God that said, God, if you, give me the opportunity to live my dreams, I will pay you back and I will live my life in hopes of helping others. And here she is less than two years after being baptized in the Jordan River telling Kesha that she can summon UFOs and channel aliens. The, the frequency of the city was just super amazing and it was super easy to make contact. We had been meditating all week and then it only took us 10 minutes before we looked up and saw I like we saw a ship at what looked like a Concorde plane you know those like black ones that look yeah. like triangles it looked like that but it had two red lights and then at one point the ship just separated into two different ships like it can't yeah. explain it but yeah. you're seeing it and you're just like Cool, so everyone else saw that yeah, yeah. all right so what it, and then you're just kind of, and then this is a real moment of like so do we go inside? Like <gasps> This new age idea of being able to channel other beings is nothing new. It's in the book of 1 Samuel where Saul goes to find a medium to speak to the dead. 
These new age concepts have been creeping into the church for generations now, to the point where Demi Lovato claims to be a baptized Christian who can meditate and channel aliens. She's using her large platform to influence others into doing the same thing. This is exactly what Roger Morneau said that the Grand Master or Satan's plan was for the world. Spirits, demon spirits, will declare themselves to be inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies. When the spirits will, through a trans medium, converse with influential people. Many testimonies of people who claim to have been abducted by aliens describe these alien beings as looking like perfect angelic beings with blonde hair and blue eyes, gray frog-like creatures, and reptilians. I don't think it's coincidence that the first original alien to come to Earth from the heavens appeared as a talking reptilian creature, giving New Age doctrines such as you are God and you cannot die. This is the very same message that we hear given by these entities from testimonies of abductees. When they see us worrying about things like death, they find it hilarious. And when they see us like running around like headless chickens, just to create money, just to keep ourselves alive, and they know it's all a big joke because you can't die anyway. And they say even if we did die, you can choose to come back from the death state. Occultist Aleister Crowley was a self-professed wickedest man alive, and he drew a sketch of a demon that would often visit him. This demon introduced himself as Lamb, which is Tibetan for the way, an exact counterfeit of the true Lamb of God who is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, we can clearly see that these entities are not visitors from other planets as they claim to be, but are actually demons seducing the world with doctrines of devils. Many will be deceived and fall away from the faith and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, just as Demi Lovato. This idea that these aliens are actually demons in disguise is not just a Christian idea. Jacques Vallée, the author of a book called Messengers of Deception, said this in an interview. In your books, particularly your most recent book, Messengers of Deception, which is many years old, you suggest that UFOs are deliberately trying to manipulate uh, our subconscious mind, to create a mythology in our culture about themselves, which is one of the reasons that they're both physical and concrete, yet very elusive at, at the same time. Uh, do you still feel that way? I think that uh, from my own point of view, I'm going to be very disappointed if UFOs turn out to be nothing more than visitors from another planet, because I think they could be something much more interesting. Something uh, from another dimension of space or time? Uh, here are objects, I think we have to call them objects, that are physical, that interact with the environment, that cause uh, effects on the witnesses, on the psychology and the physiology of the witnesses and leave traces on the ground and yet are capable of, appear to be capable of manipulating time and space in ways that go beyond what our physics understands today. Eddie Bravo on a podcast with Joe Rogan talks about William Cooper, the author of Behold a Pale Horse, and how while working with the military actually believed in aliens and UFOs because he saw them with his own eyes, but then began to wonder if he was being deceived. William Cooper, he wrote uh, Behold a Pale Horse. He wrote that book. He's like probably considered the Helio Gracie of conspiracy theories, William Cooper. He was in charge of putting together the documents for these uh, top secret naval Office of Naval Intelligence meetings. He thought they're trying to get us to believe in aliens so they could fake an alien attack so that'll usher in the New World Order. Because what happens if the aliens attack? We all unite. And all the movies, you see them in the movies, like, oh, they're attacking, let's call China. We're all together, we all unite. That's the whole purpose of everything. William Cooper, he was the guy who he was like, aliens exist. I'm looking at these documents. They're having these meetings about this crash. He's got his own little private radio and like, and then he's like, oh, these are setting me up. There's, this is all, he goes, they, they're setting up a fake alien invasion. That's what they're doing. Okay. Or could it be manipulated purposely by people who have the technology to uh, simulate UFO sightings? and. People say, well, of course not. Who would do a thing like that? Well, I would remind you that during Watergate, during the Watergate investigation, it was discovered that there was a plan uh, originated 
in the White House to uh, surface a submarine off the coast of Cuba and paint the second coming of Christ over the island of Cuba using holograms, oh, and, yeah. which is well within our technology today. Tom DeLong, former frontman for bands Blink-182 and Angels and Airwaves, has gotten security clearance with the CIA and permission to share information on the subject with the public. Communication role, it makes more so sense. So they would give some information to you and you would get it out to people. And now why wouldn't they do it themselves because they wouldn't have the same platform they don't or have access the, they, to the same platform they that don't. you would have? They don't have a way to make a movie, a book. They don't know how. They not, don't have a way to make documentaries. They don't have a way to go on on a big show like this and communicate with young people. They don't do that. I don't believe that some of the events happened on accident. You know, I think that uh, there's been a lot of events that are on purpose. Some have been for show. Some have been for. Um, a, I mean, there's a variety variety of reasons, but I, I think a lot of it is a control system that's really pushing humanity in a very specific direction. Listen to this interesting statement he said in an interview on Coast to Coast AM. But it, it can do all kinds of stuff. It seems to feed off of fear. It can be very dark and threatening at times. I, I, I remember laughing at people who would say, it's not aliens, it's demons. I, I, I couldn't laugh anymore. I'm not so sure about that. There, there is a very, very strong link between what people think demons are from the Bible and other religions um, and the UFO phenomenon. And what you have is something that doesn't like man, period. Carol Rosen was a partner and speaker for Werner von Braun, who was a leading figure in the development of rocket technology in Nazi Germany. She said in his last years of life, he started admitting some interesting things to her. When I was a corporate manager of Fairchild Industries in 1974 through 77, I met the late Dr. Werner von Braun in early 74. Von Braun's purpose in life during the last years of his life, his dying years, was to educate the public and decision makers about why space-based weapons are a dumb, dangerous, destabilizing, too costly, unnecessary, unworkable, undesirable idea. The strategy that Werner von Braun taught me was that first the Russians are going to be considered to be the enemy. In fact, when I met him in 74, they were the enemy, the identified enemy. We were told that they had killer satellites. We were told that they were coming to get us and control us, the dirty commies, that whole story. First, the Russians were the enemy against whom we're going to build space-based weapons. Then terrorists would be identified, and that was soon to follow. We heard a lot about terrorism. Then we were going to identify third world country crazies. We now call them nations of concern. But he said that would be the third enemy against whom we would be needing to build space-based weapons. And the next enemy was asteroids. Now at this point, he kind of chuckled the first time he said it. Asteroids against asteroids were going to build space-based weapons. So it was funny then. And the funniest one of all was against what he called aliens, extraterrestrials. That would be the final card. And over and over and over during the four years that I knew him and was giving his speeches for him, he would bring up that last card. And remember, Carol, the last card is the alien card. We're going to have to build space-based weapons against aliens. And all of it, he said, is a lie. Lou Elizondo, former intelligence officer with Department of Defense, said that one of his higher-ups told him to stop investigating this topic because they already knew what it was. Um, this is a person I respected tremendously, very, very senior person. He told me, he said, Lou, I want you to stop, stop doing this. I said, okay, sir, I, I certainly can, but may I ask why? And he says, well, we already know what it is. Now, at that moment, I, I honestly thought maybe it was our own technology. I was running up against some super uber secret sap and uh, you know they were telling me to stop and i said okay sir so so it's ours and he said no that's not what i'm saying and he said uh, he asked me point blank have you read your bible lately and i wasn't quite sure where he was going with that and i said well sir I, I i i think i know what it says what where are you going with this and he said well then you would know that these things are are demonic and we should not be pursuing them yeah and uh, I, I, he, was, he wasn't kidding. He was, that's exactly how, how he felt. So this is a Pentagon. Uh, this is a DO, Department of Defense official uh, saying, stop looking at UFOs because they're demonic? Correct. 
there have been hundreds if not thousands of people who have escaped an alien abduction experience by saying the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Each one of them said, yes sir, we've come across cases like this ourselves, where they've been able to stop it using prayer or Jesus' name. I said, excuse me, how come we have never seen this documented? You're telling us otherwise, that it can't be done, it can't be stopped. First answer they usually gave us, we didn't know what to make of it. I would have been fine with that. The second answer is what puzzled me and got me kind of angry. They, because it was that one that I want you to hear for sure. They said, we couldn't go there because it might affect our credibility in the realm. Do I hear cover up? Over the next 10 years, I have now worked with over 400 cases of people that have been able to stop the abduction experience in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. This is documented evidence. We see that these beings have been visiting Earth all throughout history and that they seem to defy physics by mysteriously appearing when someone meditates in a field or when their ship splits into two. Many have testified to seeing these beings walk through walls and even abduct them straight through the roof of their home. These entities always seem to appear around occultists or people involved in false religions or on hallucinogenic drugs such as DMT, and they are always sharing an antichrist, new age message that you are gods that cannot die and that Jesus is not who you think he is, but an ascended master who reached Christ consciousness and ascended back into the universe or to his mother ship. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Mark 13, 22 and 23 says, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. But take heed, see, I have told you all things beforehand. God's word does have answers for us, and he's giving us the answers beforehand so that we can be part of the elect that will not be deceived by this counterfeit. Even the astronauts that work for NASA are telling us that aliens are real. I would not be surprised if we are under surveillance by alien visitors. I think they're interested in everything that we're doing. I think just observing our progress, they're looking to see what is taking place on this planet. I love it up here. By the time she lands in September, her tally will be 666 days in space. Ironically, in Hebrew, this word means to lead astray, to delude, to seduce, beguile, or deceive. And now, one of the biggest trends is to wear this word plastered across your chest and your forehead. John tells us in Revelation chapter 16 verse 13 and 14 that he saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Could we be living in these latter times where people will fall from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils like frogs going to the militaries of the world to unite them and create military branches that build weapons towards the heavens to battle against the second coming of Christ? I believe we are seeing prophecy be fulfilled before our very eyes. Will you today wake up to the signs of the times and take your relationship with Jesus Christ seriously? Begin to dig in the truth of God's word so that we can be part of that elect that will not be deceived by this end times mass delusion.